हमने फिल्म अवार्ड में क्या नया किया है हमने काफ़ी डिजिटल कैटेगरीज इसमें करी है क्योंकि अब अगर आप देखोगे आज ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में हर हाथ में मोबाइल है तो ऑलमोस्ट दैट इज़ अ काइंड ऑफ पेनिट्रेशन हमारे आज की डेट में मोबाइल की है वहाँ तो हमने काफ़ी डिजिटली क्या कैंपेन्स करते हैं लोग हमने बहुत सारी कैटेगरीज में क्रिएट करी ताकि कंपनीज को एक तो प्रोत्साहित करें हम और जो बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस हैं उनको शोकेस करें हम इस अवार्ड के द्वारा ये आर के अवार्ड सेरेमनी का सातवां एडिशन है पिछले कई सालों में थोड़े से लिमिटेड कैटेगरीज थी लेकिन इस बार हमने कैटेगरीज को बढ़ाया है जैसा मैंने कहा कि हम चाहते हैं कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा पार्टिसिपेशन हो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोग इसमें आ सकें और ख़ास करके ग्रामीण जीवन से जुड़े लोग इसमें आ सकें ये हमारी ज़्यादा अहमियत है social media is removing social barriers india is already on mobile he said and e-commerce is the mantra of commerce the digital ecosystem as we know is dynamic and ever evolving this advancement is leaving behind a trail of a digital divide between the digital and rural india while the digital focus of government and various organization is bridging this uh, gap and the divide The, this conference is to deliberate how we as marketers need to adapt new digital strategies to access these markets and engage with new mobile social digitally connected consumers and how do we leverage big data technology and mobile platforms in rural uh, so like we said uh, that lamp lighting and for the lamp lighting just like a lamp does not lose any of its light while lighting others and so it illuminates and it goes on same goes for knowledge same goes for enthusiasm same goes for passion so for the light, lighting of the lamp uh, may i please request mr sanjay call president rmai and the man and the brain behind this event could you please amid the applause welcome mr sanjay call also mr raj kumar jha vice president rmai could you please sir mr s sivakumar ceo itc abd and Dr. Anup Kalra, Treasurer RMAI, could you all please uh, do the honors and light the lamp? के छह लाख से भी अधिक गांव की तरफ से मैं आप सबका स्वागत करता हूं हम हिंदुस्तानियों की आदत है कोई कितना भी डराए हम डरते नहीं है वो आग के बारे में बोल के या हमने आग लगा दी सो वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल इन दिस फंक्शन ऑफ आर्म ए आई वी ऑल नो एट आर्म ए आई वी हैव अ सिंगल मोटिव टू शेयर नॉलेज we keep looking for platforms where we can exchange what we've done we can learn from others and we can see and take help not only growing in our business but also somehow uh, seeing that the social cause also becomes a part of it when uh, i got into rural which is long back uh, there was nothing called digital not even a cell phone and my first interaction of uh, digital was when again one of the pioneers in this industry mr dk bose asked me in 1984 what's your hotmail id i had not heard of it there's something called hotmail id uh from dial up to a stage where my sons complained that we got to buy a new router because this one can only take 10 instruments we need to have something which takes more instruments we've reached a long way in urban as well as in rural so certainly we all will look forward today we have great speakers today and i welcome them all again uh we'll be having a very good sessions please keep noting down your questions we may not have time during the uh, debates or the, or the deliberations to take questions but 
when we are meeting out for tea or anything, please feel free and also give your feedback once the event is over. Enjoy the day and also keep tweeting with the hashtag digital.rudal. We want to know your views on everything which is going. So have a great day and we meet again when we close this day today. But till then, have a good digital.rudal day. Thank you, everybody. So may we please all put our hands together as we welcome Mr. R. Mr. S. Sivakumar. So firstly, I must uh, compliment uh, Sanjay and RMAI team on the theme of this inaugural session. You know, conventionally, uh, a rural marketing would obviously focus on how do you capture the value from, let's say in case of rural, the top 20% of the rural consuming class because that's when uh, you get the maximum bang for your buck. And top 20% of rural is obviously uh, equivalent of the consuming class of urban, which is half of all urban. So it's, it's a sizable market. How do you capture value? How do you uh, really engage and get there uh, is the typical focus. So this would obviously pose three questions, and which is what I'll uh, provide a perspective on. One is, what's the extent of the divide? The, if you are looking at, since it's rural marketing, uh, I am looking at urban rural as a divide. So what's the extent of this divide? Which leads to uh, the natural next question as to why this divide in the first instance had occurred or is continuing. Uh, it, it's, it's to some degree getting bridged, no doubt. In some areas it's getting widened, uh, that is also happening, but why in the first instance this divide occurred? And then which will automatically lead on to how can digital help bridge this divide? So those are three questions I would uh, provide uh, my thoughts on. So getting to what the extent of the divide is, when the rural GDP uh, is 45% of all economy, it sounds, it's, it's good enough. Urban is 55, rural is 45, plus or minus a couple of percentage points. But when you plug in that 69% uh, of people live in rural and 31 live in urban, the per capita GDP of rural uh, translates to one third of that of urban. So I think that is one extent of divide that one must be conscious of. I mean, there are obviously uh, richer segments in urban and rural uh, which uh, compare with each other. It may not be billions of dollars that we have in urban, but certainly uh, sizable enough in rural too. But if you look at rural poverty as another dimension, 26% of people are below the poverty line. I mean, there are many calculations of poverty line and it's a controversial subject, but if you look at the more recent and more widely accepted uh, Tendulkar Committee's uh, assessment, which is nearly twice that of urban. 15% is urban poverty and 26% is rural poverty. That's another dimension. If you look at illiteracy as another dimension of this divide, Urban, again, is about 15%, and rural is more than double, that's about 31%. It is getting bridged, certainly, and if you look at illiteracy amongst women, uh, again, it's even more stark, but that's another manifestation of what this divide is all about. If you look at, from a health perspective, infant mortality, in urban India, one out of every 29 children die within one year of their age of birth. In rural, again, it's nearly twice as much. One in every 18 children die. That is very, very inferior compared to, let's say, the goal that the world has set for itself in 2000, Millennium Development Goals, of one in 37. So that's a kind of a 
stocks. So, so we talked about income, poverty, education, and uh, health, and, and there are many other dimensions that one can look at and see what is the extent of this divide. I think we look at that as the, the background. If you move on to the second question of why uh, uh, this divide in the first instance, obviously in a, a welfare economy like India, a lot of this is government's role in terms of uh, how do you really bring up uh, all citizens to a level of equality that is promised in the constitution. There are obviously issues in terms of inefficiency, corruption, how much part of it really reaches out and so on. But if you look at what has really progressed urban, it has a lot to do with the business. How has the business right from the micro, mini and small enterprises onwards to medium scale, to larger corporates, to MNCs, everybody has engaged with urban and enabled this progress. Global integration enabled some progress. And many of these dimensions uh, have progressed, uh, if you look back some time ago in urban versus where uh, it is now. So what is the reason why the rural is relatively behind on many of these counts? Why is business not attracted as much uh, by these uh, opportunities. So one, obviously, is because rural is far out. We talked about 600 odd thousand villages. Of course, situation has improved quite significantly in terms of road connectivity now and with, with improved telecom connectivity and so on. But nonetheless, they are far out and low density in terms of number of people uh, in a square kilometer, those who live, is, is far lower. And on top of that, given the level of income that we talked about, the ticket size is small, and the variability of demand in many areas is also uh, quite substantial. So when you look at long distance, low density, small ticket size, variability in demand, you see that it is expensive to reach out and not attractive enough uh, as a margin that exists there. And therefore, in the first instance, businesses tend to focus on urban because you still have expanding demand in urban, uh, including for these basic services like education and health and as well as obviously any other income generating opportunities and uh, so on. And on top of this, so rural people, given that markets have not fully evolved, would want, obviously, end-to-end -end as, as a complete solution, and, and some of these I'll talk about in the how. And as much as possible, this needs to be customized or personalized because the level of heterogeneity uh, is far higher compared to what you see in urban. So therefore, it is not only expensive, it's also complex to service uh, the rural. And the expertise on many of these areas, or knowledge as it were, tended to get concentrated in urban. So if you look at many of these uh, dimensions in terms of go back into statistics of your doctors and teachers and, and many other professions that will help uh, dealing with this divide, it's divided into something like 20-80 kind of ratio, 20% in rural, 80% uh, in urban. Uh, that itself is uh, uh, quite a substantial uh, number uh, if you look at the quality uh, of uh, this delivery. So if you leverage that, obviously uh, go back to the same issues of uh, healthcare, uh, it, it certainly is, uh, uh, possible to leverage digital and deal with that. If you walked around and figured out what is the biggest cost uh, on health for rural people, it is traveling to the towns 
when it is not required, because there is a concern, there is a tension, you run, or not traveling to the town when it is important, that Tika will take some medicine in the village and some injection in the village and it's okay, and then it could be lethal. So the biggest cost is not so much in terms of how much you spent on medicine and how much is paid out to the doctor, but quite often because of the lack of expertise that is available and the concern uh, are not having that concern uh, in, in the vice versa case, that's the biggest cost. So when you are connected from the village through various means, uh, the uh, mobile and the audio and the uh, doctor consultation at the back end and further telemedicine where it is required, it is possible to ensure that when it is required you really go on and get that specialist care and when it is not required uh, you don't run and uh, spend that kind of money and, and waste a potential productive day. Similarly, when it comes to education, it is not as if the rural people are not spending on education. A significant amount of private consumption expenditure in rural is also on education. But the quality uh, of learning uh, is poor, partly because of lack of teachers, a lack of quality teachers. And this is what is getting supplemented wherever you are seeing initiatives through the e-learning. Uh, whether it's a tuition teacher or class teacher where uh, computers are available and uh, the, the audio-visual content related to those particular chapters, whether it is science or uh, whatever else, I think the quality of learning that you've seen is uh, far higher. Uh, and, and same in case of uh, things like managing crops, if it is agriculture, in terms of uh, how do you get uh, this knowledge input from some entomologist sitting somewhere as to what is the particular insect that has attacked my crop and therefore uh, what do I do? So decoupling source of knowledge or expertise with delivery uh, and therefore remotely delivering many things enables and that's one uh, capability of digital. The other uh, thing when I talked about end-to-end uh, solution. Quite often uh, you need information that is real-time, knowledge that is customized and transaction that needs to get consummated for effect to happen. Uh, if I take agriculture as an example, you need real-time information in terms of weather forecasts. You need uh, customized knowledge in terms of uh, particular soil uh, that I have on my land or you need uh, price uh, information uh, if I need to uh, transact and I need to supplement that with a credit if I need to buy a seed or a nutrient and all of this needs to happen in double quick time when there is uh, rain or when there is uh, no rain depending on what crop that one is looking at. In a conventional context one was typically running from pillar to post to get all of this. But in a digital context it is possible to make real-time information and customized knowledge and uh, supporting with the transaction uh, almost uh, at your home. So that kind of integration capability uh, and this is what you see in e-commerce today. Uh, it is possible to figure out what the product is, it is possible to look at options, it is possible to order, it's possible to get it at whatever delivery time. And, and obviously in uh, things like agriculture it needs to be even more rapid than what one is seeing in other consumption goods.